I think it all started when every little girl has a dream of owning a horse. Um, I didn't really come from a horse background. Uh, we lived in a neighborhood. We didn't have horses and um, I feel like I begged every day for a horse until I finally got one. I was around 10 or 11. Um, I had done a few trail rides and rode horses at friend's house but never had actually had my own horse and so that's kind of where it started. My parents thought it would be a phase, thought that I would grow out of it uh, and I didn't. <laughs> I think it became more of an addiction after the the horsey phase but uh, so I did some like local 4-H stuff. I showed my horse and when I finally got a horse I showed her in halter. I did Western Pleasure and you know none of those things really grasp what I was wanting from my horse experience and um, I was actually this is kind of crazy but I was actually addicted to a show called The Black Stallion and it came on every week and it was about a boy and his racehorse and I wanted to be a jockey. That's kind of where it all started and so the closest thing to being a jockey I guess would be a barrel racer and I knew that being a jockey was out of the question. My mom was deathly afraid of horses so uh, that was probably a little bit too dangerous and that's where the the love of the barrel racing and the horses came from. Uh, I junior rodeoed, uh, I high school rodeoed, and then I went for one semester, or actually two semesters, to Texas A&M. I college rodeoed on their team for a year, and the year that I college rodeoed on their team, I actually qualified for the NFR. And I became to realize that the horse I had was kind of a one in a million, and that if I didn't if I wanted to keep rodeoing that I would have to work at it and that I would have to train my own horses and uh, kind of set myself up for a future in rodeo and not be you know the one hit wonder and so when I after I didn't go back to college uh, my dad always said you can't make a living rodeoing and with horses and I kind of think that my main goal was to prove him wrong um, and I did so I kind of just sought out after this adventure of being able to raise and train my own horses. Um, I had a lot of luck along the way. I came in contact with Charmaine James who sold me a brood mare that has become the foundation of, of our entire program here at our ranch and all of our barrel horses are mainly out of that one mare and so you know it's it's been a lot of luck but it's also been a lot of hard work and um, we've just tried to grow our business as much as we can we have our own stallion now we have a rehab facility and we've just tried to basically have a one-stop shop here at our ranch to have you know everything from the breeding to the raising to the training to the rehabilitation um, and everything in between. I think after the NFR in 2003 uh, my horse became uh, crippled and so we had a long drawn out process of trying to figure out what was wrong with him and I was kind of at a cornerstone in my career of do I go back to school to get a degree that I really don't want and sit behind a desk that I really don't want to do or do I try to make this rodeo thing work do I try to get some young nice horses and season them and bring them along and keep trying to make the NFR and and of course I went the horse route and you know my parents were really supportive of that that helped a lot uh, it, if they would have been like no you need to go back to school that's probably what I would have done but they were like you know what this is your dream this is what you've always wanted to do why not do it now while you're young and so I think that was kind of the turning point in my career where I was like okay I, I don't want to go to school, I don't like school, this is not for me, and I, I've got to do something else. And, you know, I, I worked at it so hard, and still do every day. I mean, these horses are 24-7, and it's something that I've just been committed to my whole life. And, you know, there's, people say, you know, you need balance in life and things, but there's no balance in a life like this. It's horses, all the time. And especially for, for my family, I mean, my husband team ropes he trains a lot of the colts you know our family is just wrapped around these horses basically 24 7 365 days a week 
So it's really fun to have Tinley be as excited about horses as we are. You know, she's engulfed in the breeding program. She knows the different stallions. She knows the different mares. Um, she loves the babies. She loves running barrels. And, you know, I think it would be really hard if she didn't, uh, just because we are so engulfed in it all the time. And um, it, it's, it's just exciting to see her be excited about going to barrel races in the future. And she always talks about like which horse she's going to ride next and what horse she's going to take to the NFR. And, and she looks at the babies and she sees a future. And that's just really cool to see, you know, her be so excited about something and set goals for herself. And, and um, we've been really careful about just leaving her on a pony and not putting her on a big horse and making sure she builds her confidence and she started running roping now so uh, we we don't push it but we definitely love the fact that she is she is really excited about all the things when I hear the name Purina to me it just means simply the best uh, I have been with Purina for over mm, 16 17 years and uh, I have seen time and time again it be the best feed. Uh, I've seen the research over and over to see how the horses are responding to the different things that Purina comes out with and it, it's simply, I mean, it's truly amazing. Um, you see these other feed companies come out and they don't have the research behind their products. They, uh, they have the, the latest fads and uh, I mean Purina has, has stood the test of time. I mean it's the longest running feed company and I'm just ex I'm always excited to be able to see the horses that come to the rehab they'll be you know on a different feed a different program and we'll kind of switch them up to what we think that they need and it's always cool to see the owners come get their horses and see how great that they look and you know a lot of that has to do with Purina. Well I don't want to show my age here but I have been <laughs> with Purina for a very long time and um, I've been on the last two Purina bags and you know it's always fun to go in the feed store and be like tell the people oh yeah you know that's me on the feedback <laughs> um, but you know it's just it's really neat to be a part of a company that truly cares about the horses truly cares about the animals they want the best for everyone um, you know there's been times that I've called uh, Karen and had questions and she always answers them she always gets back with me and I just I see their love for not only the feed but for the animal and truly wanting the best for them and I don't think you get that with a lot of companies but you do get that with Purina. Our life is chaotic but it is truly an unbelievable lifestyle that we get to live and um, I'm just super thankful you know, we it's it's a team wouldn't be able to do it without the entire team um, you know helping and pitching in and it's it's really neat because you know along with Purina being them for the really long time you know I've had the same veterinarian the same farrier the same horse dentist all those people have been with us for for lots and lots of years and it, it's really neat to to have the friendship with all these people and um, I really think that's what makes our our business thrive is the friendships and the teamwork and you know everybody at the end of the day wanting the best for the horse. I am Brittany Posey Tanazi. I am Purina.